All right, welcome back. Um, so today we are continuing with that set of um, two tumblers that you made on the wheel and that you also trimmed on the wheel. Um, so today we're gonna talk about how to kind of etch into the tumblers to make them a really detailed, unique set. Um, so mine have gotten a little dry, so I'm just kind of adding a little bit of water just so that it's easier for me to kind of carve into them. Um, I'm most likely going to give you a couple of tools. So this is an etching tool that is double-sided. So this one's kind of curved and this one is kind of pointed. This one is actually kind of jacked up, but we're going to use it anyways. And then I might also be able to give you a needle tool. So this just depends on how big the class is. Um, and so the idea is first you're going to design your tumblers with a unique pattern. Um, so take, for example, my shirt has like teeny tiny little cacti on it. Um, so I'm just gonna use that as kind of an example. And I'm just gonna kind of draw a few of them onto my piece um, just with pencil, just to kind of, um, you know, get something kind of going here. <clears throat> um, one other thing, actually, I don't think I want to do that. Okay, but that's one example of a pattern. I actually had another idea. So I think I'm going to do kind of like, um, like a scene, like kind of mountains, and then, I don't know, like trees or something. Um, so think about, again, pencil will burn out in the kiln. I'm just going to kind of look outside at the mountains give myself a little kind of guideline here. Um, okay, so again, you can draw all around the piece. You will never see these pencil marks later on. Um, the goal is that you have two that go together, so they don't necessarily need to be the exact same, but they need to be a set. So let's say I do mountains on this one. Um, maybe I do um, I don't know, maybe I do like, maybe I'll do another mountain range, but this time I will do like, this one will be desert and this one will be like maybe more winter, okay? Um, so again, just to start, fairly similar. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're gonna spend some time just kind of etching your design into the piece. That way when you go to glaze it, the design will be kind of indented into the outside of the piece and you're not going to have to go in and like paint this highly detailed design it's just kind of already going to be in there 3d um so you can use kind of the scooped end to kind of carve away um your design onto the face of the piece if we are still wearing masks which we probably will i will give you a little paintbrush that you can brush the clay boogers away with so that you don't have to because you won't be able to take off your mask to like blow on it. So you'll just kind of go like this, kind of like, um, like an archeologist or something. Um, okay, so the curved end, again, is nice. You can also use the super sharp end um, to kind of carve away as well. Um, and then again, if I have a needle tool, this would be another one that you can use. Um, so hopefully there will be enough time for me to kind of go through all the tools with you um, and kind of see what we have. Worst case scenario, you're gonna have the old trusty paper clip, which does work, okay? Um, you just have to kind of get it like kind of dialed in um, and make sure that you are, you know, holding it appropriately. I think you could probably even do, nah, let's not do that. So paperclip, let's say, is our worst case scenario. This would only be if I have like a super gigantic class and I don't have enough tools to loan them out to every single um, advanced student. Because um, I definitely don't have enough to hand them out to every single student, but for the advanced section, of course. Okay, so I'm just kind of going through and I'm using the paperclip now just so that you can kind of see that it is possible. Um, to do even with the crappiest of tools. Um, and the main thing that's important to do is to not break your piece while you're kind of etching in. 
So you can see I followed, this was just kind of like a mess up this part. So, and again, the water will kind of smooth away the graphite marks, which is nice too. If you do mess up, don't try to erase onto the piece. That um, will not help you and it will just annoy you. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go over it a little bit so you can kind of see how the indentation is still there. Um, but you wanna have it obviously be more intricate than just like this one line. So think about like setting a whole scene, like maybe I'm gonna do like teeny tiny little trees on the um, hills here. Um, maybe I am going to do, these trees are jacked up. Okay, so teeny little trees. Um, maybe I'm gonna do, again, so this one's kind of deserty, give it kind of like a sun and maybe some sunbeams. Um, coming out, again, I recommend drawing onto your piece, not doing what I'm doing right, which is just like riffing, even though I did take a while on these cups. Okay, so I've got like, you can see it, you know, like a little sun, and then think about maybe something down below as well. So just using kind of a different tool, um, maybe just some kind of lower details. So again, you don't have to necessarily do um, like a whole scene like I'm doing. You can do a pattern like this. You could do a really intricate, like a mandala where you do like one pattern inside another pattern. God, the lighting isn't totally great for this. Um, but the whole point is that you're etching into the piece to create like a really nice design. Once you have dialed it in, that's when I want you to kind of go in. And again, hopefully you'll have one of these and you can really start like carving it in a little bit deeper. Clearly, you do not want to break your piece, so you have to be quite careful with it. Um, I don't totally recommend holding it, like you could work on it on the table. Holding it is nice because then you know you're not like poking through um, the piece, but um, again, don't carve super, super deep on the first time because if you carve something that you don't like, um, since this hasn't been fired yet, you could technically just fill it in with some slip and go on about your day and kind of change your design or adapt it. You know, I always say, um, you know, some of the best art is made out of like kind of accidental mistakes, things you didn't really intend on doing, but here you are with this weird design. So, um, you know, you kind of, had to add some things to maybe cover up a mistake. So that's an option as well. Um, so again, notice these little um, clay dust that's creating, just kind of brush them away. So notice how much deeper now it is carved versus even like the first ones, right? So now that I'm like, okay, I'm convinced I'm gonna do this little mountain scene, I'm really going back and kind of um, recarving it. So you will have a ton of time to do this. I'm thinking like a week or two um, to really kind of fine tune, especially because you have to do two, right? So um, it's actually a pretty relaxing, kind of like meditative process I have found. Um, so the whole point is to enjoy it, but I do really recommend planning, right? Because if you um, are doing what I'm doing and then you end up with something you don't like, it's like weeks of your time down the drain, right? Because it took you a long time to throw these on the wheel. Then you had to trim them on the wheel. Then you had to, um, you know, let them set up. And if you get to this very end of your design point and you're not happy with it, um, that would be pretty sad. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, I'm setting a bad example, but there's nobody in here, so. Um, okay, so there's my little sun, my little kind of like mountain range. Um, I didn't go back, let me go back in and re-etch my little trees so you can see them a little bit deeper. Um, and so think about when you go to glaze, like I'm a really big fan of like an ombre glaze where you kind of overlap 
some different colors um, to kind of create something. See, now the trees are kind of popping out too. Um, just to create something a little bit more interesting. And again, with something like this, um, you could paint it all one color, but like when I'm looking at it now, I will probably start like yellow, then maybe go to orange, then maybe go to red, then maybe go to like pink. Maybe then I even do like a bright green in the middle to kind of make it pop. Um, so be thinking about as you're kind of etching into your piece, how you want to um, design it later on. So again, I'm just trying to make something that's personal to you, that's unique, that is like a design that you would want to keep in your home or your room, um, or maybe you're making them as a gift for someone, so make something that that person would really enjoy. Um, and again, you can always draw onto the piece with pencil. It comes out, you know, obviously you saw me just rub it off. Um, and it also fires out in the kiln. Um, and think about, we are gonna be doing this type of design as well on a later project when we do a set of bowls. So you're gonna have a ton of time to practice. Um, and you could even have the set of tumblers match the set of bowls that you do later on. Um, so I'm not gonna make you sit here while I go through this entire thing. I will probably just do a time lapse for the rest of this one and for the next one, which I actually might do tomorrow because it's a Wednesday today. Um, so good luck etching into your tumblers. Again, try to be as unique as possible. Um, borrow, but don't steal from things off of the internet and really be thinking about, um, you know, what is your aesthetic and what, you know, are you trying to kind of say with your artwork? Um, so good luck. I can't wait to see all of them. Bye.